Welcome to the Toronto Live Off the Floor Talk Back series. My name is Como and I'll be your host for today's interview with violist and composer Melody McIver. Melody. Hi everyone. Hello, how are you? Good, thanks. To start off, I would love if you could give us a bit of a background on yourself and uh, your music. Uh, sure, my name's Melody McIver. I was uh, born in Scarborough, raised in Ottawa, and I'm now based in my uh, uh, my mother's homelands of uh, Sioux Lookout, uh, which is in northwestern Ontario, part of Treaty 3, halfway between Thunder Bay and Winnipeg. Uh, and I'm a member of Laxville First Nation, and Sioux Lookout is a part of our traditional territories. I see. So congratulations on your uh, debut EP, Reckoning, and its nomination for the Indigenous Music Award. So what was your reason for naming the EP Reckoning? It was actually uh, commissioned as, as a theater score for a play of the same name. Uh, so the play was written by uh, Tara Bagan, and it spoke of, uh, it was three different acts that spoke of, I think, the intergenerational impacts of uh, the residential schools, and it was a play on words, uh, referencing it, especially like, the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, and, um, uh, yeah, working within a framework of before there's reconciliation, there first must be reckoning, and uh, I found it was a really fertile place for, for me to be writing music, and ultimately I decided to be releasing it I as see. a okay. music video that is going to be premiering on Amplify. And um, would you like to tell us a bit about that? Sure. Uh, two, uh, two years ago now, uh, Amplify is a series which uh, I think the premiere has been pushed back a bit because of COVID restrictions. It is expected to be released this year. Right. Um, but uh, they, the, key, the idea behind it is uh, Shane Belcour is a filmmaker who's uh, the series uh, director and also quite a fine musician too. And uh, his idea was, I think, 12 episodes and pairing off an Indigenous director with an Indigenous uh, musician every episode. So each ep episode is kind of behind the scenes and making a music video and the commissioning the song and kind of a, a snapshot into the artist's life. Um, and so themes we were exploring, I was working with uh, Nadia McLaren, who's a Anishinaabe filmmaker, um, also from Sioux Lookout, now working at uh, OCAD in Toronto. Right. Uh, but she came home for a week and like it was nice to spend time with someone else who knew the territory and was also bringing kind of a fresh eye to that and um and definitely themes too is like how does an avant-garde violist like end up back in uh, uh like a remote area of northwestern ontario and career eyes like berlin or toronto would make make more sense in a conventional uh uh, conventional setting purely music focused but right. I think a big theme of that was like as an Anishinaabe person like what are you giving up in the process and like how can I also maintain a connection to both the land and my artistic practice. So uh, when can we expect to see that release? I do not have a current release date so I've uh, been told uh, the last date I heard was April 2020 so okay. I'm awaiting update on, on that but I, I just know that especially with COVID, like a lot of productions are behind schedule right now. So I'm looking forward and I'll be updating on my social channels as we get closer to the premiere. In your future, we can expect to see that. Can you tell us a little bit about the creative process when it comes to making music? It really varies. Uh, I mean, for myself, I definitely start off as a performer and I've only started stepping into like the composer role a bit more in the past couple of years. Uh, so for me, a lot comes from just kind of the joy of playing the instruments, uh, Improvisation is something I definitely draw on a lot uh, throughout um, as a way of idea generation, just like improvising and seeing what sticks. And other, uh, in more recent projects, I've been really working with the uh, Anishinaabe Huon language and trying to think of different ways I can create uh, ways of reflecting uh, language, stories, speech patterns within my music. Uh, so uh, with different trains uh, and uh, Odabanog was uh, the response that I wrote to that. Ultimately, I was also incorporating like elders' voices and speeches in blended in with the uh, with the string quartet, and uh, that's also a technique I explored a bit in the music video, where um, taking like the rhythm of how like the language is spoken and, and translating that. So I try to work with uh, within things surrounding me too, and. Uh, concepts that are important to me and finding a way that I can reflect those back into kind of a musical format. See, that's very 
Very interesting. Would you say that you enjoy performing more than you do um, composing? Or is it the same for you? It's really a balance. Uh, so I've been touring quite extensively the past three years. And even before COVID started, like I was starting to, like I think the, after a point I was just burning out and like the joy wasn't quite there anymore. I was like, oh, here we go again. It's another gig. And I wasn't excited like I would have been like a year right. prior. Uh, and it's because like the, the challenges of being on the road so much, like it takes you away from this creative space too. So it, it needs, like even in industry conventions, like you take a year to write and record an album and then you tour it for a couple of years and then you go back to writing and recording. So uh, I think they both feed each other and I can't really have one without the other. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So is there any um, sort of projects that you personally wanted to promote? Like we spoke about your um, song and music video that is coming up. Is there anything else that you wanted to bring up or mention? I'm currently working on my next album and I'm planning for a 2021 release, but uh, we're still in production, writing and production at this time, but I would like to get music out within the next year. So thank you everyone for joining us for today's interview. We'd like to thank the Community Radio Fund of Canada for funding Toronto Live Off the Floor and making this series possible. Thank you again for Melody to Melody <laughs> for taking time to talk to us today. And I hope you have a great day. All right, we guys, thanks for having me.